Welcome to the Irresistible You podcast. This is the place to get a dose of empowerment to create the life you crave and deserve. Here we talk about weight, body image, emotional eating, and other personal development topics. I'm your host, Amy Beltran, CEO and founder of Irresistible University and IrresistibleIcing.com. Hey, 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 guys. Welcome back to this week's episode. Last week, we talked all about the concept of waiting for the weight and, you know, putting our life on hold because of our size or, our, or the number on the scale. And this week, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into a similar topic and a big reason why we have waited on the weight for so long. And the concept that I'm going to talk about in this episode is goal weight. That's right, goal weight. And it's interesting because <laughs> not too long ago, somebody brought it to my attention that I use the phrase goal weight and that I use it frequently. And they had actually never heard someone use this term before, at least in the context of how I use it. And to me, it's just a normal phrase. It's been a part of my vocabulary and a part of my life actually for as long as I can remember. So it was really interesting to me for someone that's never really struggled, you know, being the fat girl or having a weight problem to say, what do you mean by goal weight? And I'm like, what do you mean? What do I mean? How do you not know? (laughs) How do you not know what this is? But it really opened my eyes to if you've never gone through these struggles that we talk about here on Irresistible You and inside Irresistible University, how would you understand what that means? Because that's never been part of your uh, path or your story. So you don't understand it. And I'm always happy to explain these things to people. Um, that I don't want to say outsiders, but people kind of outside of the, you know, this scope of what all of us here go through together. So I wanted to get on here today and just talk about the phrase goal weight and how it impacts our weight loss journey, how it impacts our body image, how it's impacting our confidence in ourselves to do certain things. And before we get started, and again, I don't want to assume that everyone knows what I'm talking about, although there's a high chance that if you're listening today and you listen to this podcast, you probably know what goal weight is. But let's just uh, get everybody on the same page and calibrate for a second and talk about what is goal weight. Because goal weight is this phrase that's talked about a lot in the dieting world, in the weight loss world. And especially if you've been a long time current or past Weight Watcher member, now they're calling themselves WW, whatever, um, it's still Weight Watchers to me. Goal weight in the Weight Watchers meeting rooms is talked about a lot, especially in the Weight Watchers world. And Goal weight essentially is the number that has been identified based on your lifestyle factors, your height. I don't know if there's anything else that goes into it. I don't think so. It's this magical number that you're going to reach. And when you reach that number, that's considered goal. You got to your goal. Um, That's how it kind of works in Weight Watchers. And if that number doesn't really sit well with you or you know that, you know, I'm a really athletic person, I carry a lot of muscle, I'm never going to weigh that number, you are and were allowed to go to your doctor and have them write a letter um, saying that this is the number that is goal for you. Okay. Outside of Weight Watchers, I don't, you know, people just say, you know, I want to get down to 130 or whatever, whatever that number is that you identified, whether it was through a uh, weight loss program, through your doctor or through yourself, that number that you're striving for is goal weight. Now, that is a technical definition, right? Because if we want to lose weight, we, we say, okay, my goal is to weigh, you know, X and that's my goal. That's not really what I'm talking about here. I am talking more about the concept of what goal weight has come to mean for those of us that have been going on these weight loss journeys in our lifetime. And for those of us that that have gone on a weight loss journey or we've been on the yo-yo diet cycle, goal weight is this magical place 
where you have finally gotten down to the number on the scale that you've always dreamed of. And it's probably a number that you've never seen before. And goal weight is this magical place where you finally have the body that you've dreamed of having. You now have the perfect body. And in your mind, you've built it up that once you've gotten to goal weight, you've made it. Like you have made it. Like your entire life has been made. And once you get to goal, all the happy things that you've been dreaming about, they finally, they just fall into place. They fall into place Simply because you're at your goal weight, because you've built up this fantasy that everything is going to shit right now while I'm overweight, but if I could just get the weight off, you know, the money problem will go away. My my medical numbers are going to get better. You know, my marriage will get better. Whatever that thing is that you feel like, you know, if I could just lose the weight, everything else will get perfect and it'll fall into place where it needs to be. You also dream about getting to goal weight because then you can finally wear that outfit that you've been fantasizing about. Don't shake your head because we've all done it. I'm talking about the fantasy that you play in your mind where you walk into the room and everybody dramatically turns their heads towards you as you walk through the door and people that haven't seen you in a while, they don't even know it's you because you just look so amazing. We've all had that fantasy, and that's the fantasy in your mind. You're going to wear these amazing outfits that you've always envied, and you finally go on vacation. You're going to wear the two-piece bathing suit. You know, you're going to go and maybe, you know, at goal weight, you're going to get pregnant, get married, whatever that is. Goal weight is this magical place with unicorns and fairies and rainbows that you've built up in your brain And it tells you that when you get here, then everything in your life will be perfect. And getting to goal weight, the dreams are limitless because at this number, you will be unstoppable because you no longer have the weight holding you back and keeping you prisoner to all the great things in life that you wish you could do if you were only skinny. Okay, now. (laughs) I'm going to take it back to reality. We're going to leave the unicorns over here for a minute, and we're going to get back to reality because that's what I do. Goal weight has been romanticized as this magical place that we have to strive for. The problem with all of this thinking is that getting to goal weight, well, yes, it's possible. There's plenty of people that achieve and do it. It's going to take time. And on the the other hand, I want to just, you know, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm going to be the bearer of reality for you. And the reality is you might never get to your ideal goal weight. And I know that might sting, but it's the reality. And whether you get to goal or you don't get to goal, it's going to be okay. Now, what's not okay is waiting for the wait. What's not okay is waiting for goal to live your damn life. And what do I mean by that? Waiting for goal to live your life. What I mean is if we go back to the unicorns and rainbows magic situation, you know, That was when we wore the outfit. That was when we went on vacation. That was when we got the dream job. That was when we did all the amazing things that we felt that we weren't allowed to do with the extra weight on our body. And you should never have to put everything in your life, all of your dreams, all of your goals on hold just because the number on the scale isn't quote unquote goal or the number in your genes isn't the number that you think makes you an acceptable person because you're already an an acceptable person. You're already worthy of going after your dreams and your goals regardless of what number 
you see on the scale and regardless of what number is in your genes. And I also want to, you know, let's pour some more reality on things. Life is happening now. And life is going to continue to happen whether you're at your goal weight or not. And if you, it's like, when you think about it, like, waiting for goal is like holding your breath until this this thing happens for you. And while you're holding your breath, you're passing out because you need to breathe and you need to live your damn life. And I don't care how much you weigh. I don't care how many inches your hips are. I don't care what the number is in your jeans or your dress. You need to live your life because nothing is promised to you. Nothing except for right now in this moment. And, you know, also the thing about all this is that when you're losing weight, and there's nothing wrong with losing weight. I'm on a weight loss journey. I know that many of you listening are on a weight loss journey, and that's okay. But that's the key phrase that I want you to focus on, what I just said. Weight loss journey. It's a journey. And this journey, it doesn't stop just because you get to goal weight. So let's just talk for a second about getting to goal. Once you get there, assuming that you do, well, now you still have to maintain and live the healthy lifestyle that got you to that goal. And what happens for so many of us, whether we get to goal or we get really damn close, is we think that, all right, I'm off of this train, I'm going to get on the next train because I'm at goal and I no longer have to watch what I eat, I no longer have to you know, make healthy choices, I no longer have to exercise or do the active things that got me here, and that is wrong. If anything, getting to goal and staying there is actually even harder than losing the weight in the first place. Because when you're losing the weight, it's like you have that that thing that you're looking towards. Oh, I'm going to get to this number. Then I'm going to lose this. Then I'm going to lose 10 more pounds and get to that number that I want to get to. And once you maintain, you don't have, and I use this term loosely, but you don't have that thrill of the chase, right? It's just like when you're dating and it's exciting and it's new and it's different and it's, you know, you've got butterflies in your stomach and, you know, everything is is like exciting and brand new. And then you get married and it's like the same old, same old every single day unless you make an active decision to work at that and make it exciting and live life in the moment, all right? So remembering that this is a journey, and the journey of losing weight, let's let's back up a minute and talk about not being at goal weight. When you're on this journey of trying to lose weight, there's really no time limit on that. And I think that's another tricky place where you put this, this time limit on how long it is supposed to take. And that if you don't achieve goal by, you know, such and such date, then you're a failure. You can never do this. You always fail, yada, 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 yada. And that's the thing. If you look at this differently, that it's a journey and that this journey never, ever stops, whether you get to goal or not, because the things that you have to do are creating a healthier lifestyle. So this is the reason why so many of us, and myself included, have lost and gained and lost and gained. We've gone on all the yo-yo diets because we bought into the magical illusion that life would begin for us at goal weight. And that's the problem. And... You know, that's a really dangerous belief to have. You know, there's nothing wrong with having a goal, once again. But what what there is something wrong with is wrapping up everything you have into this magical place that doesn't exist. And that's like a buzzkill, right? Because I say it doesn't exist. Let me talk about that. You know, another big issue, if you have gotten to goal or you've gotten close or or not even, 
is that you probably never addressed the emotional weight that you're carrying. And that emotional weight is really, really heavy. Emotional weight is the stuff you can't see. It's, it's the fat and the pounds that you'll never see on someone. It's the weight, the mental, emotional weight that has years of traumas, you know, name calling and experiences that negatively impacted your body image and your confidence. And getting to goal doesn't make all of that go away unless you've been doing the work to lose the emotional weight and the physical weight. Does that make sense? So let me just kind of repeat that again. Even if you get to your goal weight and you haven't done the work to lose the emotional weight, getting to goal is never going to matter because eventually the weight will come back on. And even if the weight doesn't come back on, the feelings that went along with being the quote unquote fat girl, they never go away unless you work through them. Um, you know, and this is the reason why so many women can lose the weight, they get to their goal, and they still aren't happy or satisfied with their appearance and with their life. You know, you hear things like, you know, I got to goal, but now my skin is too loose and saggy. And, you know, I really want to have surgery. I look like shit. Um, my face has, you know, is like lost all of its, you know, um, I can't think of the word, <laughs> collagen. And, you know, it, it's sagging and I need a facelift. And, you know, I lost the weight, but I still have stretch marks. So I'm never going to wear a bathing suit because I'm so embarrassed. I'm so humiliated. Or, you know, my kids, having kids ruined my stomach. I'll never be able to lose this this little pooch that I have going on. And, you know, all of those things that we do to ourselves, that we say to ourselves, that we, you know, we pick apart our appearance and it makes our body image like suck and we have no confidence is because we never do the work on ourselves during the journey to get rid of all of those beliefs. And so that's why I always say like you can get to goal and still be the fat girl. And when I say fat girl, if you listen to a lot of my podcasts, you know that when I use the word fat girl, it's a mentality. It's a mentality that starts when we're overweight and the fat girl has all of those negative beliefs. She's had all the name calling and the traumas and the things that come along with being overweight, going into a store and wondering if, you know, a clerk is going to say something nasty to you, going to a restaurant and, you know, scanning all of the chairs to see if you're going to fit all of those things. And that's traumatic stuff. You know, traumas go from small to big things. And all of those things that you carry around is what I call the inner fat girl. And the inner fat girl is never going to go away unless you unpack all of the things that she's carrying around. And that's what I call emotional weight. So you can lose all the weight in the world and still feel like the fat girl. That's why sometimes you look in the mirror and you've lost weight and you still see yourself as the bigger person. You can hear all the compliments and still not take any of them seriously. You doubt everything someone says to you about how you look. Um, And that's why, you know, body image and confidence or a lack of, this is an epidemic that affects all of us as women. And it's not just related to being, you know, physically overweight. It's something that affects all of us, you know, and um, this illusion of goal weight has created a lot of this way of thinking inside of us. It's created a lot of the reasons why, you know, we fantasize about what it's going to be like to lose the weight. And today, if no one else will give you this permission, and even if you won't give yourself the permission, I am giving you permission today to live your damn life, regardless of what number you are on the scale. And I also want to let you off the hook and tell you, none of this is your fault. Because we have been conditioned by society, by the media, and 
we've been told that this is just the way it works. You know, fat people have to be miserable. Skinny people have all the fun. And if you want to be this happy, bubbly, perfect person, well, you have to lose the weight and that's how you'll become that person. And the truth is you can be miserable skinny and you can be miserable fat. And that life is happening now. You know, whether we have the perfect body or not, life is happening now. And I don't want you to keep putting that on hold. Um, so this magical illusion of goal weight, keep in mind that it's an illusion. And you can get to goal, but understand that all of those feelings that you have about hating yourself, not feeling confident, you know, all the, the fat girl mentality stuff, all of that stuff is going to stick with you unless you do the work to drop those emotional pounds. So I hope this is making sense. I hope that it resonated with you um, because, you know, this is something that so many of us go through and, you know, put the goal weight, put that out of your mind. Take that number of goal and put it out of your mind and replace it. Replace the idea of what you want your life to feel like. What do you want it to feel like? You know, not having a certain number because that really doesn't mean anything. But think about what you like what you fantasize about for yourself, whether it's being able to run around more outside or running a 5K or a marathon or being able to play with your kids or going swimming in public. Think about the things that you want to be able to do and think about how you want to feel doing those things. And that's your goals. That's your goal to, to work towards, to strive towards. Um, and that will replace, like I, for years and years and years, I was wrapped up in goal weight and living this fantasy about what would happen when I got to goal. I mean, I shared this before, but I even have a journal from when I was 11 years old that, and it said, this is the first day of uh, my new life because I'm going to lose the weight. So I spent a lot of time thinking about that and I no longer care so much about a certain number. I care about how I feel. There's a certain, um, you know, just being able to, to exercise and work out and kayak and play with my family and do the things that I want to do. And I've embraced the body that I have and I'm still striving to lose some of the weight. But I had to embrace the fact that my body is never going to be society standard skinny. It's just not. I wasn't built that way. And now I'm so happy with that. Like I am so, I, I love my body shape. I love where I'm at. There's things that I want to improve on, but I don't let it stop me from being the person that I am, from doing the things that I am, because I, I deserve to do those things, whether I'm where I'm at right now, whether where I was 50 pounds ago, or whether I am if I lose another 50 pounds. That shouldn't have any impact on going after my dreams and my goals, and it shouldn't for you either. So that said, I want you to think about what's the new goal for you? And I don't want it to be a number, a dress size, or a number of inches. What is your new goal? How do you want to feel? And if you want to, I would love it if you could share that with us over in the free Facebook group called Irresistible University. If you just type Irresistible You up in the search bar, you'll find it. Request to join the group. I will let you in. And I also want to let you know, if, if you don't have this already, I have a free action plan. And it's five simple steps to start looking and feeling irresistible at any size. And it's a printable uh, workbook, so you can either print it out or you can even fill it in digitally on your computer, whichever way you prefer. And it's totally free. I will link that below um, in the notes so that you have it. Click on that link. All you have to do is put your name and email address, and I will send it right over to you, along with an invitation to the Facebook group. So if you don't want to go searching for it, it'll be in the invitation with the action plan. 
Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your support. And if you really like this episode or you love the podcast, if you head over to iTunes, leave a rating and review, that would be amazing. And I hope you have an irresistible week.